Now what I'd like to do is come into uh, one, two, three D catch. I'm going to come to my captures. Uh, I'm just going to simply say new capture down here in the bottom. We start taking some pictures. We simply want to try to get a 3D model that is 360 degrees. We want to review those uh, going around the bear. That looks okay. We've got 22 images this time. So we just say finish capture and then it says tap to process. And this should now upload the photos and generate the model. Then we're gonna see what kind of result it gives us here on the iPad. And we're going to check that against our project on the internet. Oh, we waited for a few minutes. Uh, now it looks like our project is done. The cloud with the check mark is on it. Let's see what the results are. Loading our model. This was an image with 22 photos. We'll see how well 123D Catch could do with the model this time. So this is a bit more interesting although only a bit more interesting than the last version. Uh, this seems to be cutting it off. Uh, it doesn't get any of the front of the basket. Gets a little bit of the table melted into the basket there. Uh, what we see here is we have the front of the basket where we have taken a lot of photos, but again, we do not get uh, anything behind the bear. Now I'm gonna save this, but before I save it, I've noticed something here in the interface that says, share to the community is on by default. We'd like to turn that off and then we will say save capture. Here on the interface, you have the keyboard up. You see that you can put in the name, you can choose categories and other things. The category is for when you're sharing with the community and the gallery. But what you cannot see here is how do you finish what you want to do? There's a next button. It goes to the next field. Then it turns into done. If you were not tapping on the next button and going through and noticing that it changed from next to done, you would never see that. The other thing that you can do is you can get rid of the keyboard and then you see there's a submit button here behind the keyboard. This is a little bit of a quirk in the interface. Sometimes it might cause someone some problems. We'll see if Autodesk is having a problem connecting to their server again. We did have a similar issue in terms of internet connectivity with 123D catch on the web. The web browser version had severe difficulties uploading photos if the internet connection was not absolutely perfect. Capture not saved, communication error. We're gonna try again. Here it says that the capture was not saved. Unable to communicate with the community, the 123D catch community. Make sure you have an internet connection and try again. Well, we're gonna set this off to go save. While this is actually trying to communicate with the community, we're gonna come over here and begin the speed test for ADSL. And what you're gonna see is uh, the speed test is running just fine. I want to show you a little bit here how you can manipulate your model with one finger, spin it around. With two fingers, you can pinch and zoom. With two fingers, you can drag as well. All of that works uh, very much the way that you would expect it to. It also has the gyroscope function here. So when I put the model in the middle of my display, now it appears that my iPad is a window looking at my model. You can see here how the model moves in space as if it were stationary a little bit as if it were stationary, and the iPad is looking at it through a window. When you hold this in your hands and you move it around, it makes it quite easy to see how you can move around the object in 3D space as if your model were in front of you. Let's look at our model now on the internet, see if it is uh, complete and also visible inside my project file. We have four projects that you can see. This is the one that we had just completed on the iPad. And indeed, this, uh, this does appear to be the model that we had seen earlier. Uh, same level of detail. The extents of the model is not what we were anticipating. We had taken 22 photos in 360 degrees around the model. Uh, we only have results of the front of the bear and the front of the basket. We don't have uh, any significant detail of the basket itself. And we go to the back side of the bear. The entire back side is missing here. So there's no basket, there's no back geometry on the bear. With the interface, it, two fingers, you can zoom in, you can get quite close. It looks like we have some pretty nice, reasonably nice detail here going along uh, the corks and along the bear. So the way that you can see that is you can actually turn on the materials plus the outline. So you have here materials only, that's what we're currently looking at. 
If I click on Materials plus Outlines, you'll see that I have the mesh. You'll see, for example, uh, here the area around the corks, you actually do have uh, the 3D geometry, the mesh, which is uh, almost like laying a sheet over the top of the corks. So you don't have a very fine differential in terms of the geometry. It's almost like you laid a cloth over them that would cling to the corks. But then on that cloth, you have, of course, uh, the photographs, the texture mapping from the photos, which is laid on top. So here you see the level of detail of the actual mesh. I'll zoom in. Maybe you can see that here with the model. You can see on the bear here. There. You have, uh, here you have the mesh on the nose of the bear, as well as the different texture on the bear. So there you have it. That's 123D, 123D Catch on the iPad. We used an iPad mini. Uh, we checked our results on the internet using the 123D Catch web application. I would say that uh, at this point in time, either my photography skills are horrible or the automatically generated models from 123D Catch uh, using the iPad app uh, is not excellent. Thanks for watching.